Salutations! My name is Dave, and yes, based on my greeting, I am 100 years old. Thank you for asking. In all seriousness, this is the Xylogamoto channel, where I'm dedicated to this crazy quest of collecting and reviewing every English language game released for the 8 and 16-bit Sega consoles released in the United States, which consists of the Sega Master System, Genesis, Sega CD, and 32X. However, keep in mind I said English language, not North American there, which opens up these libraries to bonus titles, and in the case of the Master System, almost doubles the amount of available games, as it was just criminally managed in the United States. But, as I told someone on Twitter this week, at least we got ALF. Yeah. Anyway, if that sounds interesting to you, I ask that you consider subscribing, as I produce one of these reviews every week. We're right on the precipice of 100 subscribers, and you know what that means? Yes, merchandise emblazoned with the custom Zalagamoto YouTube URL. If I'm able to produce a Zalagamoto t-shirt by the end of the year, I may just cry. I I'm, a, I'm a bit for Klimp just thinking about it. Okay, now that all that's out of the way, let's get to this week's review, which is finally back on the Sega CD with Bill Walsh College... What? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm getting a production... What do you mean the Sega CD isn't ready yet? But I said last week we were... It's... What? Yeah, well, your mom goes to college. Yeah, the Zylogamoto, the retro gaming channel with all those up-to-date comedic references from 2004 you'd expect from a channel based on 30-year-old games. But in all seriousness, I was originally planning on reviewing Bill Walsh College Football for the Sega CD this week, but my Sega CD is still in transit on its journey back from the old world, so we'll be bumping that to next week. But unless something terrible happens, next week for sure. Sega CD or no, the show must go on for Zalagamoto, so instead, let's do another Genesis game. And you know what? I promise no sports titles this week. I can already feel the views going up after PGA Tour Golf last week. Even though it's a great game, who knew that people wouldn't be interested in a golf title? That video is about as popular as Fuzzy Zeller after Tiger Woods won the Masters. Look it up. No, rather than the sports genre, we're going to do a genre that I haven't touched yet on Zalagamoto, or at least the subgenre anyway. And that subgenre is Isometric Shooter. If you're not sure what that means, an isometric shooter is a game where instead of going from the bottom to the top in a vertical shooter, or going from left to right on the screen in a horizontal shooter, you're going in a diagonal direction, usually from the lower left corner to the upper right. Sega more or less invented this genre in the arcades in early 1982 with Zaxxon. However, this week's game is not that, as Zaxxon didn't get a release on the Genesis. But titles in the series did appear on the SG-1000, Master System, and 32X. Instead of Sega, this week's game stems from a somewhat unusual source, Sammy Corporation. And yes, before I get in comments below, I'm well aware that Sega and Sammy are the same company now. But in 1992, when Viewpoint was originally released for the Neo Geo and the arcades, they weren't. The reason why I consider Viewpoint an unusual title is that on a console dominated by SNK first-party releases, it's the only game released under the Sammy label for the Neo Geo. But if you're going to only release one game on a console, Viewpoint is definitely the way to go, as upon its release, it was heralded as one of the most impressive shooters in existence, and a showcase for the power of the Neo Geo. There was simply nothing else on the market like Viewpoint when it came out, and games like it in The Last Resort made the case for the Neo Geo being able to excel at things other than just fighting games. So, imagine my surprise when about two years later, when Sammy decided to bring a version of that game to the Genesis. I've talked previously on the channel about how the Neo Geo is similar in nature to the Genesis, but if it were all hopped up on horse steroids. And due to that, it's a struggle to try to fit a Neo Geo title onto the Genesis. And for more on that, check out episode 30 on King of the Monsters. So, I've got to admit, I'm a bit nervous. We'll find out if those nerves are warranted in a minute, but first, a look at the package. And here we have the Genesis version of Viewpoint. This copy is admittedly not in the best shape, but it certainly could be worse. Just to start out with, the outer case has some issues, with the top corner being broken off, and then the front, side, and rear outer cover having numerous gouges and scratches. I have no idea how that happened, but thankfully any actual holes are small, 
and somehow, even with all that damage, the hang tab is intact at the top of the case. I guess while the previous owner may have been a bit rough with it, at least they weren't a total monster. As marked up as the outer cover is, the inner cover has held up well, but there's definitely still some issues here. The top of the inner cover was slid out at some point, and now there's edge wear among the entire run. That's not too uncommon, but what's strange is if you look at the front and the back, there's a line going down the cover vertically, and it almost seems like someone took the inner cover out at some point and accidentally folded it under something else, and then put it back. I haven't seen that before in the previous 106 episodes. Just somewhat bizarre. However, at least the inner cover has held up well image-wise, and doesn't appear to have any sun or water damage. The cover art, while good, I definitely don't have any complaints about it, it is a little odd, though. I say this because humans aren't involved in this game in any way, except for possibly piloting the Bupo fighter, so I'm not exactly sure whose eye this is supposed to be. Also, this art is unique to the Genesis version, with the Neo Geo and Neo Geo CD sharing the same art, and then the FM Towns and Sharp X68000 versions having their own unique art. And then finally, the PlayStation version, just going with in-game footage. Again, this art isn't bad, per se, but I definitely prefer what all the other consoles got, with possibly the exception of that PlayStation version. Flipping over the back, and this isn't a rear bad cover, but it is a bit simple. The screenshots on the right side have a good mix, and each shows a picture of a different level in the game, showing off the game's variety. The flavor text looks good with the blue on black styling, and it gets a groan inducing stinger at the end with Viewpoint, changing the way you look at action games forever. Yes, Sammy, very clever. Oh, and one small note, there's a label here for one or two players on the back, and just to be clear, while the game technically supports two players, it's in an alternating fashion, not at the same time. Opening up the case, and thankfully the inside looks a a lot better than the outside, with the cartridge in good shape and the manual in near mint condition. This is a pretty small manual, but being that Viewpoint is a relatively simple shooter, that's not necessarily a bad thing. The manual has lots of screenshots from the game included, and does a good job of explaining all the various bombs that you can pick up and other special items. There's also four detailed pages about which will be facing in the first two levels, but then it glosses over the rest of the game, leaving you to have to find your own way. I don't mind wanting to keep the later levels a surprise, but they did such a good job with the details for levels 1 and 2, I really would have liked to have seen that at least for level 3 through 5 as well, but that's being incredibly picky on my part. Okay, that's the package. Let's get to the game and see how accurately it portrays the Neo Geo original. I left off that last section with a question, how accurately does Viewpoint on the Genesis reflect the Neo Geo version? And while probably questions that relate back to the actual quality of the game versus how good a port it is are more important, the quality of the port is definitely something that has to be considered when rating these games, just like with any other port of an arcade game to the home version. And let's be clear, this is a high standard that has to be met here. When Viewpoint was originally released for the Neo Geo, it wowed people. My go-to video game magazine at the time, Die Hard Game Fan, gave it a 99 out of 100. A 99! I remember seeing that and really wishing I could play that game, but of course, like most people at the time, the Neo Geo was out of the realm of most gamers, and you had to hope that a local arcade would stock an MVS copy. So, for most people, the only way we were getting a glimpse of that greatness was to hope that Takara or someone would port the game to one of their measly 16-bit consoles. Those ports weren't always the best, unfortunately. Sometimes that was the fault of the developer, either they were just lazy or cheaped out on the amount of storage allotted to the game, and sometimes it was just impossible to get all those little details that the beastly Neo Geo was able to pull off into a console that simply didn't have the same amount of horsepower. This was something that Reader's Head in the Port of King of the Monsters that I looked at back in episode 30, where if you compare what the Genesis version looked like with the Neo Geo, it was clearly scaled back a bit, and then of course it didn't help that the original game isn't very good to begin with. In the case of Viewpoint, however, there's one distinct difference. 
Rather than being a port of an SNK title by an alternate developer, Viewpoint for the Genesis was published by the same company that developed the Neo Geo original, Sammy. Sammy smartly didn't try to put out the Genesis version of Viewpoint right away, instead waiting until almost two years after the Neo Geo release, giving them plenty of time to get the most out of their design and the decent sized 16 megabit cartridge. In comparing the two games, I probably went about things in reverse order that I should have because instead of checking out the original version first, I dove head first into playing the Genesis version. And I've got to say, even without having seen footage of the Neo Geo version in years, the Genesis version impressed me right from the start. I knew when playing that first level, of course, the Neo Geo must look and sound better, but for Viewpoint being a Genesis title instead, it compares extremely favorably to other games on the console. All of the in-game action flows well, with there being minimal slowdown, mainly just when a boss shoots out a ton of bullets, and not many other graphical issues like flickering to detract from the gaming experience. Along with the game looking great, it sounded nice as well, and I'm sure there's a decent chunk of that 16 megabits dedicated to the sound system. After playing the game for about an hour and a half, I took a much needed break and watched some footage of the original game, which confirmed my thoughts from earlier. While the Justice version is far from a Xerox copy of the original game when it comes to the graphics, I've got to say it holds up incredibly well. Also, it looks like that it was used as a source for the later Sharp X68000 version in a lot of ways, with the Genesis version still being the superior version of the two. While the Neo Geo version is clearly more detailed and eye-popping, with sprites have more frames of animation, the Genesis version fully conveys the proper feel of the game and is impressive on the console in its own right. So, we've established that it's an impressive port, but is the game good? I mean, you can have the greatest port in the world, but if the original game is crappy, well, you know, garbage in, garbage out. To be blunt, this is a stupid question. I mean, I said earlier Game Fan gave the original game a 99, so if it's a solid port of an excellent game, it has to be good, right? Well, I can safely say the answer is yes, but I'm trying not to step on the rest of the review by saying just how good. Let's break things down so we can answer that question of just how good Viewpoint on the Genesis is. First off, let's get away from talking about technical things like graphics and sound for a minute. As important as those things are to making a successful game, especially in the arcades, the design to the game needs to be something special, to really give it something that makes it stand out from everything else and be memorable. If Viewpoint had just been a horizontal or vertical shooter, I don't think anyone would have cared. To be honest, the actual gameplay isn't anything that hadn't been done in a shooter before. You fly around, shoot at things, can charge your main weapon for a more powerful shot, get satellite guns that allow you to fire over a wider area, uh, get a shield that can protect you from a few hits, and you can collect three different types of bombs that act as super attacks to help you get through particularly difficult sections of the game, like the bosses. You've probably played another shooter that contains some, if not all, of those features. What makes Viewpoint special is its isometric layout and its reliance on sprites rendered from 3D polygonal images. Those two things together give the game a fantastic pseudo-3D look in an era when that sort of thing usually was a next-gen requirement. And saying pseudo-3D is probably underselling things a bit, as the levels do feature full 3D aspects. For instance, the fight against the fish mid-boss in level 2 where different parts of the floor are constantly raising up, causing you to have to avoid them as well as the mid-boss. As if your life wasn't stressful enough as is. Along with the enemies having an innovative look to them via the graphics engine, they're also incredibly varied and original, with each level hosting a multitude of different looking enemies, with the levels usually having a theme of some sort. You're definitely not stuck just blowing up the same ships and tanks over and over and over again. I've more or less described how the game plays, but just for some details, the controls are spot on and very responsive. Your ship moves around the screen freely, not too fast, not too slow, allowing you to navigate some definite proto-bullet hell sequences 
against the various enemies. During some of the sequences, I could see wanting to be able to move just a little faster, but I also think that, that could come back to haunt you at times by moving further than you meant to, so I think they got a good balance of the two. Your ship's charge attack works well, and you can easily switch between charging and rapid fire when you want to, to best deal with the situation at hand. Also, while the game doesn't feature many options, it does allow three difficulty choices and three amounts of lives to start out with, to allow players to decide just how frustrated they want to be when playing the game. And apparently Infinite continues as well, which are quite useful when you get stuck on the same boss for an hour. And yes, that is a thing that happened to me. The third level boss is definitely on my shit list. From a graphics perspective, I've already mentioned that the game is a competent port of the Neo Geo title, but what does that really mean? Well, in short, the graphics are fantastic for a Genesis title. While the sprites in the game don't feature quite as many frames of animation as in the original, everything is still well animated, and you and the enemies glide across the screen while the background moves along at a steady pace. Each of the levels features a good use of the Genesis admittedly small on-screen color palette, and even though the game is limited to 64 on-screen colors, the game never looks overly washed out or plain. The sound of the game is just as impressive as the graphics. The music certainly isn't the best I've ever heard on the Genesis, but it's pretty good, and at least a reasonable facsimile of the arcade original. Occasionally there will be some instrument samples, especially horns, that can get annoying when you hear them over and over and over again due to dying, but I think any music would get tiresome at that point. The sound effects in the game are pretty good as well. Being a shooter, there's always lots of shooting going on for both your craft and the various enemies, and then of course there are plenty of decent sounding explosions as well, which unfortunately is sometimes going to come from your craft. And actually, that leads me to my final point about the game, and that is, even though it's an impressive port of the Neo Geo slash arcade machine, this isn't a game for everyone. In fact, I would go so far as to say it's not even for everyone who likes shooters, as you also have to be able to appreciate difficult games. Because viewpoint is hard. I wasn't kidding about those bullet hell sequences, especially against the bosses. And unless you have a shield, it's one hit and then you're back to the checkpoint. And even if you do have the shield, certain hits, such as directly running into an enemy, are instant kills, as the shield is really only useful against bullets. I'll readily admit, I played this game on easy with the max amount of lives, and I still never made it past the third level, and that was even after watching a playthrough to try to get some tips about how to beat that boss. Do I wish it was a tad easier? Yes, at least in easy mode. But I also feel like if you're good at shooters and you practice, the game is beatable, so I'm not going to dock it too much for being difficult. All in all, Viewpoint was a pleasant surprise this week, and I was glad I decided to sub it in as the game of the week. Is it a perfect game? No, definitely not. And Neo Geo purists will probably want to look elsewhere to get their shooter fix. But as far as shooters go on the Genesis, Viewpoint is a highly original, challenging, solid arcade port that will keep you playing, assuming you don't break your controller, that is. As a result, I'm giving Viewpoint a 3 star rating. I only wish all Neo Geo ports were this good. Okay, that was Viewpoint. It won't happen, but boy, if I ever get a bit too confident in my gaming skills and need to be reminded exactly of where my skill level is at, Viewpoint is a good way to take me down a few pegs. I probably will come back to it at some point, Game Genie in tow, but for now I'm going to accept the fact that there's definitely a lot better shooter players out there than me. Next week on Zalagamoto, well, I could basically just sub in the paragraph I'd written in this space last week, but that's not my style. The reason why I could do that though is because finally, in the last you know, 18 minutes of video, I have gotten my Tower of Power back from the shop, and it's better and better than ever. And as a result, I can finally get back to playing Sega CD games, and Mega CD games for that matter. Yay, another thing to collect. Due to that, it's finally time to get Bill Walsh College Football for the Sega CD out of the way. 
I've already tested a few titles in the Sega CD, and it's working fantastically. So even though I've more or less played this game before on the Genesis, I'm still excited to get my early 90s multimedia on. Please remember to subscribe if you like this video, and remember, whatever you like to play, have fun, and be excellent to each other. Later!